Charlotte here on the Atlantic Ocean. Myself, Riley, our two kids and crew, Laura and David, began to prepare for nighttime. Sailing miles off the coast in the night near shipping lanes, we have to dodge the occasional ship, unmarked fish farm, always between buoys. We need to stay on high alert when we're sailing all night. We were expecting to arrive to our next destination tomorrow by midnight. So join us for some time on the ocean, miles from anywhere. And wait to hear about our exciting new job offer. We're looking for crew. Whoa. Right, I'm gonna go for the what were you saying? Today's been just all about Lenny. Today has just been taking care of Lenny. That's the entire day, at least for us, I feel. <laughs> During your nap, he was the worst. Send him to his room. You were sleeping in it. <laughs> what can you say, mate? I see mana water. Water? Yeah, water. You see any turtles? Yeah, I see how many turtles. Accurate the reflection of the sunset yeah. in the window. Ocean vessel. Ocean vessel. It's a ship. Can you see the lights? There's the lights. And what else can you see in the sky? What else can you see? A big sail? Yeah, a sail, Mama. Mama, it, this is that's a, a ship. A ship? Yeah, a ship, Mama. Wow. Has Two ships, and there's Two more. Ships. Lenny, they're, they're anchored. It's anchored. They're anchored. Yeah, it's anchored. So it's night time. I managed to have a sleep during the day, so I'm going to go until one or maybe even two. And then I'll wake David up and he'll go for uh, three hours and then he'll wake Laura up. He'll take the last bit of the shift into, into daybreak. That's all from me here at the nav station. There's also, I saw it on the, on the nav, and then I remembered, well, because we've come through here before, there's unlit navy towers, which you've just got to avoid. Hopefully they're marked correctly, but I don't think that's very good. That's another thing that we need to dodge here at night time on the night shift. What's that, Lenny? There's a star on the way. That is a way, because you just woke him up. I was waking up. You gonna climb into our hole? Nah. Here, go, da da. Here, go. Good. Thanks, mate. <laughs> you been up since 5.30, Laura? Yeah. David asked me if I would urinate. Should I do? It was good. <laughs> well, these two kids slept like little angels, hey? Didn't you? Thank you. Mum even got a good sleep. Thanks, Lenny. You slept really well. Hello. We're going into the port aft engine room for a freshwater flush. Okay. We pickled the water maker, which means that you mix in a solution of metabisulfate and that goes into the system so that when the water is sitting there for even more than a week, but certainly we were going for about four months or even five months, it's the most time we've spent at home by an absolute mile. It can sit there and the water doesn't go off and get manky, and which would ruin your membranes and that's gonna cost about two grand or two and a half grand or something like that. So you don't want that to happen. So what I did was I pumped metabisulfate into the system. Now we're back and we are running the starboard side engine to create power and also so that we can do this operation here, which is um, freshwater flush and then run the water maker so that we can test and then hopefully have a water maker for our time in the Bahamas. So yeah, the freshwater flush just pumps water from our tank and pumps it all the way through the system 
and back out the hole there. Then once I've done that for probably five minutes or so, so that the system is completely flushed, we'll switch it over, run it, and then the valve clicks over to the other one and we'll be pulling in water from the ocean and running it through the membranes and then hopefully we'll have our fresh water. That's very good. Mr. Fly is there? Is it there? No. No? That's the water maker, Lenny. Well, it's taken me about Ooh. a thousand years, but we have finally made toaster sandwiches for lunch. Yes. <laughs> I hope they're okay. What is it, Lenny? Are you tired? David said no. David said no, yeah, because we're making, we're eating lunch now. He didn't say anything. <laughs> We'd all really gotten to know each other over the past couple of weeks. Riley had hung out with David quite a bit prior to him hopping aboard his crew this sailing season, but I actually hadn't met him yet. Um, we'd only spoken to Laura over the phone. And now, only two weeks into our trip, it felt like we've always known each other. That's actually one thing I really love about living on sailboats with people, is by living in such close quarters and the high stress situations sometimes, means you get to see people's true colours quickly. Hot in the kitchen and it's hot outside. We all swear that we can feel we've gotten further south, but we haven't even gotten 180 nautical miles south yet. So it's all just an illusion. You're a bit hot. It's an illusion, Lenny. It's an illusion. We, you can't get hot. You can't get hot until we're 180 miles. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful sailing conditions. What else can I tell you? We just made some water with the water maker. Don's asleep out here. He looks so sweet. You gonna come with Mum? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm the my heart. Now show me your biggest bounce. Go. <laughs> it's a bit rocky, isn't it? The boat's moving. Now they're reading a book. Yeah, I wanted to ask you what um, some books that have been worth reading, sailing books, that our audience could pick up if maybe they're new to sailing or even advanced. Yeah, I learned to sail God. Clearly is number one. Ah, okay. Good advertising. I, I really like A Voyage for Mad Men. It's not particularly helpful, but I just think it's the most incredible story yeah. ever. I was going to ask our audience, what's your favourite sail book that you've read? And also, what's your most informative one that you've come across? These guys are pretty good. Lynn and, Lynn and Larry Party, you'd be hard-pressed to go past them. Oh, yeah, Greg, Gregor Tarjan's Catamaran one that I've, I mentioned in my big and pretty bloody popular catamaran video. Whoa! What? <laughs> what? That better not be a false alarm. I think there's dolphins. <gasps> yes! First bit of wildlife, you guys. Her baby! Delfino! <laughs> Delfino! <laughs> oh my Big goodness. Bottom. It's yeah. No? <laughs> Look at us all with our phones. <laughs> this, is, this is the world we live in. Yeah, actually, I never told you, Elena. When I was on the phone to David, when he was on board and you and I were still, I think we were still in X now. Okay. Um, he was saying to me, ah, oh, man, there's so many cockroaches. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't tell you because I knew that you would freak out and yeah. that you would hate it. It had a lot. Like, I was talking on the phone with him. I was laughing my head off. you were walking on the floor. I was trying oh. to injure my meal and then the cockroaches were walking the floor. It was like... How did you get rid of them all? With this poison. It's oh. just amazing. It's crazy. When I stepped foot on this boat this time, I saw one cockroach. Oh, I did you? Yeah. One. one. 
and I freaked out. You didn't out. tell me. It was just, it was dead. Are already. you sure? Yeah, it was dead, so it must have got to your poison. Yeah. Um, so good job killing all the cockroaches. The cockroach. Touch wood, we've been so lucky for our entire, like the entire time we've been sailing for six, seven years now. No bug infestation apart from um, like little fruit flies because our cool drink had like burst under the floorboards under the in the bilge. Anyway. Should we leave the house here? Tower. You let us enjoy our grateful moments. Oh, hey, Yosha, what are you grateful for? Metamorphosis is a novel by Franz Kafka. The protagonist, Gregor Samsa, turns into an insect, is disgusted by his own appearance, and is eventually abandoned by his family and dies. I really like that novel, and the moth here reminded me of it. Thank you for watching, and please let's all remember that if someone you know turns into an insect, Please be kind and don't throw apples at them. Love from all of the vagabonds. We have a job offer for you guys. We're thinking about how amazing it's been having crew on board and how we don't ever want to not have crew. We're actually saying that we definitely need weeks to ourselves on the boat. Because it's been so great, we want to maintain that. We, we, no, it's, it's weird. Well, it's not weird. We're not as homesick as we probably otherwise would be. So that yeah. yearning to come home or, really home. or that, that weird feeling that you get from just travelling and or being isolated too much too often, it just isn't there. We've made some yeah. really awesome friends and we just we want to keep the ball rolling. It's yeah. just been incredible. Yeah, this boat has never felt more like a home. Now having a second kid and crew on board, we're like, sweet, we can keep going forever. So yeah, we're just thinking about the trimaran and sailing in Asia, which is what we'll be doing after we leave this boat. So we already have crew for this boat, but we're looking for some cool like-minded people to join us in Vietnam and then heading down to Indonesia. Some hard workers that are tough. What do they need? What do they need to be able to do? They need... Nah, so... There's, there's two positions. I don't give a uh, rats if you're male or female for either. If you're a dude that wants to look after the boys, no problem. If you're a girl that wants to get in the engine room and pull a, a shell out of the exhaust system, that would be really cool. Very cool. But the maintenance slash sailor type person needs to be able to at times or even frequently teach me be enthusiastic so yeah. that we can jump into jobs and nail them and also project manage some stuff and order parts is a nightmare. Yeah. There's so much time that you spend thinking about getting, repairing stuff and order, ordering it in. Ordering and emails, if I don't have to spend that time on the computer, I would just be so happy. Yeah, we can make better videos for you guys. So <laughs> there's that type of crew and then there's looking yeah. after the kids and, yeah, and, that's and helping like, out doing runs to the shops. And yeah, running to the supermarket when we can't and doing a bit of cleaning and looking after the babies. Nailing the kids, yeah. It doesn't hurt if you can also cook as well. <laughs> we like, so we're very easy to please. Oh. Simple, healthy food, yeah. done. Some veggies and rice, throwing a, a fish every now and then and yeah. we're super, super happy. We would love an Indonesian I couple. Pr prefer plain meals. To be yeah, no sauce. Sauce on the side always. <laughs> I love sauce. We'd love an Indonesian couple or single people. Um, so we don't want to exclude people, but extra star for Indonesian, another extra star for Indonesian couple because we're going to be visiting your country. So we would love for you to esquire us around yeah. your waters. And you will be sharing a room, which is why we're thinking, oh, a couple would be great. But there's going to be bunk beds, so it can still be two people that aren't together. And We just want to have a wicked time, mm. really. If you want to do that too, then what do they need to do? You yeah. need to like the video. Now this is getting... <laughs> so we just had a team meeting and... Yeah. Send us in your resumes to the email address that's in the description below. But we're going to be checking to make sure you're... You've been following us. We want someone who's been with us for a while now, watching you get a better feel for what it's actually like on the boat. So um, you need to be subscribed. Uh, we'd love it if you could comment and like the video. It always helps, doesn't hurt. No, 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 no. Well, no, because I'm going to trace back 
the email and check if they haven't liked and commented. Yeah, you will not get the job unless you've done all those things. Great, okay. Yeah. So and we really look forward to hearing from you. We can't wait to be sailing through Asia. And I mean, have you seen some of the places? We cannot wait. Yeah. Can I just say the thing about the confidence thing? We, we don't need more children on the boat. If you, we prefer if you're confident and you're not shy, you can jump on a tuk-tuk and go across the other side of the island and help us. You'll need to be able to, when Elaine is talking about confidence, you'll need to be able to, at times, I'll say, all right, uh, we're doing a visa run. I'm gonna take you to the beach. You're gonna climb that mountain and on the other side, you'll find a small village. In the village, you're going to have to hire a tuk-tuk, which is gonna take you to the nearest port. And then you're gonna have to organize yourself to get a boat to the next port yeah. where you'll be able to renew everyone's visas. Yeah, it can be difficult. You're gonna get uncomfortable. So please, no one who's never traveled before, we need people to be like, yes, on a mission. Yeah. All right, cool. Just had to say that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, we look forward to hearing from you. This is cool. And we'll keep everyone updated on um, the applicants and maybe you guys can help us actually pick in the end. That would be cool if we narrow it down to a couple of people. I'd like to select a bunch of people and, and have them coming and going. So when the, yeah. so they have their holiday for the year and come and see us for Two, three months. Two, three months, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, it'll be like a three months job. Rotate. I think. Mm. Don't know. We'll, we'll see how we go. Yeah. Lenny, he can't say finish properly, so when he's on the toilet, he goes, da da! Snitched! <laughs> <laughs> Are you finished? No! What's that, mate? What's that? I'm snitched. I'm snitched. You're snitched? Yeah, I'm snitched. Okay, mate. <laughs> oh, that must have hurt. <laughs> I'm snitched!